Good morning. Today I want to talk about liver biopsy. So as a liver doctor, sometimes I would say rarely nowadays I send a patient for liver biopsy. There are two types of liver biopsy. One is called targeted. That means on a, in a scan, in the liver, there's something. There's a lesion, there's a lump, there's a growth. We want to ascertain if it is a cancer or what type of cancer or if it is a cancer at all. We will then put the patient uh, on the table. We sterilize the skin. We put a probe under the ultrasound scan, look at the lesion, see where the lesion is, avoid any blood vessel or bowel duct, put a needle in, suck out some tissues from the nodule, and then we send to the lab. We will then wait for about four or five days to see whether the nodule is cancer, not cancer, if it's cancer, what type of cancer, if it's a cancer, what type of mutation the cancer has. So this is called a targeted liver biopsy. Uh, usually nowadays we don't need to do that most of the time because uh, to confirm whether something is a cancer or not, you can use a lab test, blood markers, cancer markers. And we can use a dynamic scan such as a CT or MRI with contrast with different faces or with the appearance in different faces we can deduce whether it's cancer or not cancer. In some cases that we can make a diagnosis with non-invasive method, then we have no choice but do a targeted biopsy. The second type of biopsy is what I call non-targeted. For example, hepatitis B, fatty liver, or autoimmune hepatitis, or primary biliary cirrhosis, or sorry, primary biliary cholangitis, we changed the name uh, some time ago or there's some unknown liver damage that we want to find out what is actual cause, how much damage has the, has the disease been. Then we'll do a non-targeted liver, that means we can sample the liver in any part. We don't need to know, we don't need to particularly target one part, but any part of the liver, we assume they're homogeneous, we take a tissue out, so non-targeted. When I was a young doctor um, at NUH, we took part in clinical trials, and in a typical clinical trial, we biopsy patient before and after an intervention, such as the antiviral therapy. So I had the privilege of doing, uh, I would say, tens to hundreds of liver biopsy by the bedside. That was the last time, um, I would say more than 20 years ago. Nowadays, we hardly do that. We normally do the ultrasound biopsy, we don't usually do the liver biopsy under ultrasound guidance. That means we put the ultrasound scan probe, make sure that we see the liver, make sure there's no bowel duct or blood vessel running under, we choose an area that only got the liver flesh, we put the needle in, suck some tissues. This procedure is now more and more performed by intervention radiologists. I no longer practice liver biopsy because they are better and safer technique. So if you, if your doctor asks you to do a liver biopsy, you have to ask for a few things. Number one, make sure that uh, the biopsy is essential. Liver biopsy carry risk. Roughly, I quote my patient, 1% risk of bleeding. The liver is very vascular. We put a little insert of some tissues. Sometimes, if we hit a small blood vessel, or worse, a bowel duct or a big blood vessel, they can leak into the peritoneum. They will cause severe pain. So the bleeding is a real complication. It can be very serious. So we normally will say, uh, usually, roughly under good hands, 1% risk of bleeding. It's very low, but it's still, after all, more than zero. So I will tell my patient, make sure the indication, the reason for biopsy is genuine and real, and you can't get better information than the, than the biopsy. If you can have a blood test that can give you more information, do that first, and biopsy when you have, when this is absolutely essential, because there's risk involved. Number two is make sure you're not on any blood thinner or anticoagulant. If you are taking clopidogrel or aspirin because of a heart or, or, uh, or a stroke problem or vascular problem, if you are taking any coagulant like warfarin, sarato, for say an irregular heartbeat, that anticoagulant will increase the risk of bleeding. So if you're on that, talk to your doctor, find a window that will stop the anticoagulant on, on any clinical agent for a while before you do the biopsy. And we institute it a bit later after the biopsy. Talk to your doctor. Number three, if you're taking any supplement, be careful, volunteer the information to your doctor. I ever did a colonoscopy on someone that I asked her many times, are you on any medicine, any, any patient, any problem? She said no. After the scope, we did a polypectomy and she surprisingly had a polypectomy bleed. So we need to do a second scope to stop the bleeding. So later on, I told her that after the colonoscopy, polypectomy bleed is very rare. I would say roughly 1%. It's, it's very surprising that happened to you. I'm sorry that happened, but it happened. And she then volunteered to say that she's taking something called krill pill. Krill, from what I research, is actually a spore of shrimps. They are found in the cold water. And krill has been shown in some belief, some study that it will prolong life. I don't know how true, okay? A later study has shown that krill actually contain an anti agent, like an aspirin. So she, when she was taking a krill pill to prolong her health and uh, her overall well-being as a supplement, 
uh, that actually has some anti-plated agent. So when we do a scope, we take a polyp, the polyp uh, bleed from the stock. So I've now learned that many herb and any supplement that we are taking, or I don't take supplement, sorry, that my patients are taking, may contain some chemical that can interfere with the health. Krill, I just mentioned, uh, ginseng, uh, uh, and uh, lingzi, all that, they may have some effect on uh, on, on, the, on, on the coagulation, etc. So I would suggest that if you are taking any supplement, volunteer the information to your doctor. Your doctor will probably going to ask you, are oh, you have any medical problem? You are on any uh, anti plated agent before an invent, intervention like a biopsy. But you are taking supplement, volunteer that to your doctor as well. Number three, after liver biopsy, there will be a wound. The wound will seal by itself. Usually it's okay. But do not increase your blood pressure or heart rate a lot because when that, sometimes the high blood pressure or heart rate may may dislodge a clot and cause bleeding. So if you have a liver biopsy after that, rest. No strenuous exercise for maybe five to seven days. Okay, you want to go to the gym, you want to swim, please stop. Wait for at least a week before you re-engage in the strenuous uh, exercise. Most of the time, after liver biopsy, we get the results four or five days later. Then you can talk to your doctor again. To sum up, liver biopsy is a small procedure. It has a 1%, roughly 1% risk of bleeding. We take it very seriously. We only do that when we have no other information uh, from blood test and scan that we must have a biopsy to get the information. So have a good reason to have a biopsy. Number two, you're taking any herb, any supplement, please volunteer that to your doctor. It's safer to stop all these herb supplement for at least a week before the procedure. Number three, if you're on any uh, anti pleasure agent, aspirin, clopidogrel, or any coagulant for your regular heartbeat, please volunteer the information to your doctor to discuss how long you should stop it or whether you should do the biopsy at all. Number four, after the biopsy, you'll be observed in the hospital for about half a day. When you go home, do not engage in any strenuous exercise for up to one week, okay? I hope it helps. Thank you.